Picture this, the year is 2010, and it's the golden age of the App Store. There are games like Angry Birds, and among them is Sword and Poker, released on January 7th, 2010 for the iOS App Store by a company called Gaia. I'm not going to go over the game too much, but essentially, it's an RPG combined with elements of non-traditional poker wrapped into an easy-to-learn game. Like many iconic games made at the time, it was great, and it was one of my childhood games that I wanted to play again. But before we get into the process of that, let's talk about the game some more. So as already stated, the first game was released on January 7th, 2010 for iOS, and it did well in the West, but in Japan, it was the number one paid app at the time, which was quite an impressive feat. However, with this newfound success, a sequel was released only four months later on May 2nd, 2010. The second game compared to the first was more high quality with more detail compared to the first. However, this did not mean that it was necessarily better, as this is a topic for a future video potentially. However, this is where things would start going downhill. At some point, the games would be removed from the app store, and then reinstated, as if nothing ever happened multiple times. To quote Touch Arcade, it's as if they were randomly disappearing, then reappearing like some kind of creepy carnival. Eventually, this would lead to the game being removed from the app store permanently, meaning that the only way to play the game was if you had it downloaded from when you bought it. So why did this happen? What was the reason? Well, while this could be wrong, this is what I think happened. After Sword and Poker 2 had been released on iOS for quite some time, I think that Gaia removed the game from the app store due to going into bankruptcy. I'm not sure how the terms for making apps on the app store goes, maybe there was some contract where they had to pay money to keep it up on the app store, maybe they weren't fulfilling it, but nonetheless it got removed. Perhaps they removed it to stir fear among fans and cause panic buyers to come in. Whatever the case. The game was removed multiple times until an eventual permanent removal. However, in the midst of this, Konami was observing. Konami saw that the game was very popular and saw potential for profit, buying out the company and making their own ripoff game, Swords and Poker Adventures, for iOS and Android. It was free to play with the pay to win aspects, losing the genuine appeal that Sword and Poker had for an attempt in a greed filled cash grab. It is not to say that games are wrong to be made for profit but that this game was a ripoff, stripped everything the original games had going for them for a cash grab. And for that, it makes me despise Konami for ruining these games. So that's what I think happened. Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, but it was pieced together by researching through multiple articles made around when it was still the app store. Speaking of research, that's where we get into the meat of this video. One day, I was trying to remember an old game I played on iOS and searched it up and eventually found the game on YouTube. There are a few videos, but not many on the game. However, the next day, I ordered a charger for my old iPhone 3GS, expecting that I could re-download the game from the App Store and play it again. If you didn't know, when iOS 10 released, Apple removed the support for 32-bit applications to be downloaded from their App Store. However, if you had a device pre-iOS 10 with a license of a 32-bit game, as long as you had the same Apple ID with said license on a pre-iOS 10 device, you could re-download it from the App Store. With my phone being ancient, I expected that I could do this. However, I was very stupid, expecting this to be a simple ordeal. You see, as I mentioned, the game was removed from the App Store, and because of that, Apple also removed any traces of licenses on anyone's Apple ID. Meaning that even if I still met the conditions, there would not be any server with the data of the application on it. It had been removed, essentially becoming abandonware. Due to this, I scoured the web, I checked Twitter, and while there was more information, still to no avail. After taking a look around, I eventually found someone who had the file and was still active, and so I messaged them. And this absolute legend had already turned out to have exported the games in IPA format quite a long time ago. I was pretty much in shock when this happened. I even unzipped it, because if you don't know, you could just rename an IPA to a zip file and it will work without issue. Sure enough, it was the whole game. I even managed to get the second one as well. After this, it was on to getting the game on my device. And that's where the tricky part comes in. This part becomes somewhat technical. Essentially, because that game is no longer on anyone's Apple ID, I have to sideload the game, and this means jailbreaking my iPhone. However, to sideload, you need an unsigned IPA file, which in my case, I also had. So to jailbreak, 
These are the three most common methods I've seen among pre-iOS 7 devices. Jailbreakme.com, an untethered jailbreak that basically works by swiping a button and installing Cydia onto your device. This is the most simplest and best, but the problem is that it doesn't work if you're not within a certain firmware range. The second jailbreak is another untethered jailbreak called Green Poison. The way this works is on a Windows 7 device or a virtual machine with a specific iTunes version, you start a sequence and prepare for jailbreaking where you make your phone go into DFU mode. The phone will reconnect and is then ready to be jailbroken. After it boots, it loads an app called Loader where it installs Cydia. However, this sometimes has an issue, as there can be USB issues and other complications on virtual machines, and that's when we get into our next jailbreak. The third jailbreak is Redstone. The way this one works is similar to Green Poison, however, this time it's a tethered jailbreak. You get the firmware file your iOS device is running, open it up in Redstone, Redstone puts Insidia and other stuff into the firmware file, and then you go follow steps to get into DFU mode and boot up with Cydia. The downside to this jailbreak is that it's tethered, meaning that every time you want to reboot, you have to use the program to properly boot back up. I tried with both Redstone and Green Poison many times, but could not get them to work. After that, I eventually bought an iPhone for fun, but it actually had a firmware version that jailbreak me supported, so I jailbroke my phone with that, downloaded AppSync through Cydia, used the program, and finally sideloaded Sword and Poker. This is by far a pretty rare moment to happen, that I managed to be lucky enough for everything to line up, but I eventually got it working, so they end up very happy. A couple of things I wanted to say is that I have an archive channel for stuff relating to Sword and Poker, so if you're interested in that, check that out. And the second thing is that if you like this video, I won't be doing this type of content on this channel, and I'll be uploading game review styled content. So if you're interested in that, stay around. Thanks for watching, and see you later.